Hey everyone, I'm Bluey, and why is there no Blue Ranger in Power Rangers Battle for the Grid? Are you freaking kidding me anyway? Good old Power Rangers, having many video games throughout the years. Some being good, some being eh, and some being Power Rangers Zeal Battle Racers for the SNES. With the recent success of the mobile game, Power Rangers Legacy Wars, which is quite enjoyable, the developers of that game, Enway, made a full-fledged console fighting game for 20 bucks, which takes elements from the successful Boom Studios comic books. Enway has promised to give updates to the game later on, so today's review will focus on Power Rangers Battle for the Grid at launch, but when the game gets updated, I'll do a follow-up video covering those updates to see if they improve or hinder the experience. With the pre-rambling out of the way, let's review Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. So what's the story of this Power Rangers fighting game? Well I'm asking that question too since I can't find any story in this game. I suppose it's a simplified version of Shattered Grid's narrative, with Ranger Slayer and Lord Draken involved in the main roster. Other than that, the arcade mode gives us barely any story outside of a few character interactions. But hey, as long as the rest of the game is good, I don't mind a lack of story. While the game's graphics aren't the most mind-blowing thing out there, they look decent for a $20 budget title, with lots of colors on the character models and detail in the environments. While the characters don't speak themselves, they show a lot of personality through their character movements. Like Super Mega Force Yellow's punkish attitude, and Lord Draken being high tier evil, loving every second of it. Then we get to the gameplay, which is easily the best part of the game. I mean, gameplay should be the best part of any game, but that's besides the point. You have light, medium, and heavy attacks, which you can chain together for combos, along with a special attack button that works similarly to Smash Brothers' special attack button, where depending on where you move it, when clicking the special attack button, you'll get a different special attack. You also have the traditional fighting game special moves that you can activate by filling your meter, and there's Megazord specials that you can use once a battle for massive damage. The fighting is really fun and easy to learn for newcomers, but the fighting game veterans can also have an enjoyable time chaining attacks for the highest combos. We unfortunately now have to take a look at the negatives of this game. The selection of modes is very limited, only having arcade, online, and training modes, the bare necessities for any fighting game, and nothing else. Hell, some players can't even access the online because of the PlayStation Plus or Nintendo Online subscriptions locking online out for most games on their platforms. You know what else is lackluster? The cast of characters in this game. So NY teased this with an image of 15 character slots when the game was first announced, with 3 DLC fighters coming later. So we at least thought we were all getting 12 characters at launch. We ended up getting 9 characters at launch. I will say, despite the oddball choices like Cat from SPD and Mastodon Century, all the characters are really fun to play as, so I'll give them that. My problem with this roster, as I hinted at earlier in this video, is forgetting a Power Ranger staple, the Blue Ranger. Now maybe it's because of my channel username and blue always being my favorite color, but they included Mastodon Century and Goldar instead of a Blue Ranger at launch? I think Goldar would be a better DLC choice than a Blue Ranger. After ranting about something small, let me rant about something big in this game, the price tag, which is $20, which I feel is overpricing this game. Not helping is that there's a $15 season pass with the 3 extra DLC characters. At most, this game should be $15, not $20 for 9 characters and 1 single player mode. Doesn't help that other games on the PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo digital stores offer a lot more content than this game for around $20 to $50. Games like Guacamelee, Shovel Knight, Undertale, Cuphead, Celeste, Super Meat Boy, Hollow Knight, and a ton more offer more content than their games at the same and even lesser prices than Battle for the Grid, so there's no excuse for the lack of content for 20 buckaroos for this game in 2019. In conclusion, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is a good game with tons of flaws that hold it back from a game I'd say to spend your money on right this second. The gameplay is really fun with colorful graphics, but a lack of content is the game's greatest weakness. I hope Enway gives a few free updates to this game with new modes at the very least instead of locking all the post-launch content as DLC. I give Power Rangers Battle for the Grid a 6 out of 10. Now you might think I'm gonna raid Enway's headquarters cause they made a game with a lack of content and they didn't include a Blue Ranger- No, I'm civil. I'm very civil. I'm just gonna go to Starbucks and grab some coffee, actually no I don't like Starbucks.